Oil today dropping below $95 a barrel on concerns that aggressive Fed tightening will lead to an economic slowdown. My next guest has been looking across the commodities complex, especially at copper, as the world transitions or tries or maybe gives up on clean energy. He says everything's pointing to a downturn. Joining me now is S&P Global Vice Chair Dan Jurgen. Dan, it's great to have you here. So many major world events happening. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, all at the same time. Yeah, I mean, if I can, I want to just start with this news that apparently the uh, Mario Draghi, our audience knows him very well. He led the European Central Bank through its debt crisis a decade ago. He's apparently now just said he will resign as head of the Italian government. What is at stake here in Europe from their political <sighs> void as they confront a, an energy crisis that, as you say, looks like it's set to deepen? Yeah, it's absolutely because uh, I think from the European perspective, they're focused less on oil, but on natural gas and getting through this winter and maintaining unity and cooperation. And basically, uh, Vladimir Putin has opened a second front in the in the war, not only in the battlefield in Ukraine, but in the energy markets in Europe, where he's using natural gas to try and uh, create an, well, he is create an economic crisis, hardship. And he said, bring populists to power. And, uh, and ultimately lead, as in his strange language he used, change the elites in Europe. Hmm. So I think, so the Europeans are saying, are, it's a race. Can we fill our gas reserves uh, in time for the winter? And Putin is trying to make it very hard for them. The Italian uh, stock market, the futures are down about 5% right now. We've seen widening spreads between yields on the periphery versus Germany. And Germany itself is in a bit of a pickle here. What do you think is going to happen on July 22nd? Will Russia turn on the, the gas pipes, the flows back into the continent? Well, I think Russia is uh, going to manipulate the gas supplies for their political purposes. Uh, they'll find, you know, they, they'll save maintenance. They'll find other reasons uh, to do it. But I think it, Putin laid out a strategy last month at the St. Petersburg International Economic uh, Forum. And uh, he's following through on it. So they may start it up and then find some other reason. But I think we're going to see more disruptions because for him, uh, his strategy is break the coalition, and that's to break the willpower in Europe, and that's by creating economic hardship there that leads to rebellion of, against government policies. So he knows what he's doing, and he understands the energy markets very well. You know, with apologies for such a simple question, how are we in the U.S. going to be affected by all this? Well, I think, obviously, on gas, if the gas, you know, Europe's economic problems uh, if they deepen, we'll certainly feel them. We'll feel it if the coalition breaks. Uh, the German economics minister has gone so far to say in an extreme case to talk about a, a, a Lehman 2008-type uh, contagion if the German economy really buckles. But I think we'll feel it in the energy markets. Uh, obviously, right now we're seeing, you know, a pivot in the energy markets from worried about not enough oil to where the it's not Saudi Arabia that really has the high cards now and what happens to the oil price. It's over on Constitution Avenue over at the Federal Reserve here in Washington. Hmm. That's probably going to do more to determine the oil price than anybody else. Well, that's somewhat reassuring uh, because it, you know, we, hopefully the Fed is a little bit uh, less of a nemesis in some cases. I'm trying to figure out the right words to use here. So we are somewhat insulated, I, I hear you say, but it also depends on sort of the fate of our economy. Well, our fate of the economy, inflation is a number one issue. But the oil market, notwithstanding uh, the fact that prices are down, remains uh, very tight and uh, the next few months can still be very difficult. It's, it's oil and natural gas together. Obviously, you know, whether it comes now or a month from now, we'll, as a result of the president's visit to the Middle East, we'll see more oil coming from, uh, from Saudi Arabia. Also, it helps that their OPEC plus deal with Russia is coming to an end anyway so that they can increase production. But, I, you know, I don't think they want to make it, they don't want to do it, they're pivoting on a dime. But psychologically, that can also affect the market. Do you think the market will be tight? Um, do you think commodities in general will be tight? I know you're warning about copper today and saying, listen, this is a, the key input for the entire energy transition. But it, we're at basically two-year lows in prices right now. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it's, you know, if you go back to where they were in March and where they are today, it's you've gone from one world to the other. Well, copper is known as Dr. Copper because of all the commodities, it has a reputation for this uncanny ability to predict economic downturns. And that's certainly uh, what it's doing right now. But when we, in our copper study, what we just said we came out with today, the future of copper supply, it's if you look at the need for copper, for electric cars, for solar, for transmission, uh, you're going to see a need for copper demand literally 
uh, will double between now and 2035. And, you know, we've heard a lot of governments, the U.S. government and others, expressing great alarm about the availability of minerals. Uh, and now they've just formed the U.S., the EU, a mineral security partnership, which tells you hmm. their concern. What we try to do is quantify it and say, yes, you're going to need a lot more copper than uh, you think if you're going to achieve these climate goals.